My name is Ayan Farah. Um, I'm a Somali Swedish artist and I live in Stockholm, Sweden. And I work predominantly in fabric and uh, with natural pigments and clays um, that I collect internationally. So I work in textiles, but I consider them more as painting, I suppose, and because I use techniques normally used in, in quite traditional painting with like layering of pigments. I do put them on stretchers, and so I, I do consider them paintings, but at the same time they're textile-based works. And these are antique and reclaimed uh, materials that are uh, have been used previously in different estates and families. And uh, I collect them from different locations. When I was coming to Blackrock, I had the intentions. I think my focus was really to look into indigo, I think. That was my, one of the, my main focuses. I wasn't really aware of the, ex I mean, the extension of how globalized materials have become. And so it's not really as easy to find um, natural materials that people used to use as it possibly used to be. Like I've, I've seen that in other countries. And one of the things I was really interested in is uh, um, natural clay buildings and how that used to be something that was used a lot around Africa, but has disappeared over many centuries because of how people use cement as a building material. And I was interested in the um, fired, I mean, brick clays that um, more and more architects have started using. So what I'm interested in is the pigment in itself and the material. There is so many different ways you can treat indigo, depending on what type of indigo it is. There is like, I think there is over 800 different types of indigo. So each location has its own variety. And that, I mean, to the extent you can get color out of that is really interesting to me. Like some indigos are much stronger and have a much deeper color and some are more subtle. And I'm really interested in the variations. So that's also been really helpful. And also meeting someone who uses indigo as a dye and has a, what is considered like a local knowledge, which is different. And me comparing notes to how I would normally process indigo, how she did it. So it's been, yeah, it's been my main focus. My intention was to use what I could find here, but also to kind of consider how I can use that in connection with what I already had. What I've done here is I've learned how to like create new patterns in my work, which is something I don't tend to do major steps in my work. I do quite small variations and each work is like a step forward. They're all experiments. So while I've been here, each piece has changed color so many times. So it's become like I've gone through the spectrum basically. It's like I came using um, rust in the beginning and developing one type of work and then I over dyed that to make a light indigo. Um, I've, done, I've tried out the clays that I got from the site that we went to for um, making bricks and I've dyed with that and then tried to make that into batik and, and so on. So, it's, so now I'm kind of figured out what that one work is gonna be that has all these techniques all together in one. So that's what I'm doing. <laughs>